Hey everybody, it's Benny One, and I'm back at you with some movie reviews, and I'm starting off my Star Trek movie review series, everybody. That is correct. There are 13 Star Trek movies. If you count the original cast Star Trek movies, there's six of those, and then we have the next-gen Star Trek movies, which there's four of those, and then we have the Kelvin Timeline Star Trek characters. They have three movies, so we have 13 awesomeness movies coming up everybody and we're gonna start off with the first one everybody star trek the motion picture everybody so yes they saw basically the reason this movie got propelled into being a movie was is they were they wanted to reignite the tv show because in the 70s the TV show, the Star Trek TV show, started getting really popular, playing reruns on TV and everything, late night, like the momentum and the pop, it was almost more popular in the early 70s than it was in the 60s when it was airing. And then Star Wars came out. They saw the success of Star Wars and they're like, well, let's try, they're like, we want to get this back as a TV show and we can have all the cast come back. But then they're like, let's just make a movie. Let's just make a live action freaking Star Trek motion picture movie. And they did. They got everyone to come back too. I mean, you got, there's Kirk, Spock, freaking Scotty, uh, McCoy is back. Everybody that was in, a, in that original Star Trek TV series is back. I mean, you got Nimoy, you got Shatner. They're all back to play these characters and they're all great at playing these characters and it's awesome to see them in a live action movie i will say though that the first star trek movie is probably one of the weakest ones in the bunch um because i think what they did was is the ideas that they had for the the new version of the tv show that was gonna that they were gonna do instead of making a movie I think they took an idea of an episode of the show that they wanted to restart again and decided to turn it into a movie because the story is, it's, it's kind of boring and simple. They literally find this like thing out in space that's like this blue cloud looking thing and there's something at the center of it but they're not quite sure what it is, if it's a ship or what it is. And it literally is moving towards Earth slowly, and it attacks some Klingon ships, and they disappear. Nobody knows where the hell they went. So they send the Enterprise out, and it's a new version of the Enterprise. I'm pretty sure it's the Enterprise B, if I'm recalling correctly. If I'm not right, please let me know down in the comments if it wasn't the Enterprise B. But I know it's the newer version of the one that was in the show. And they're... I, I almost want to call this movie the like the freaking the Enterprise porn video because it literally there's so many shots of just the Enterprise flying or just sitting there in this movie like they wanted to show off that new version of the freaking Enterprise so bad and in a live action movie because they had a bigger budget and it wasn't the TV show budget so they wanted to they wanted to show that bitch off. And I get it. The Enterprise is a cool ship. For me, it's up there with the Millennium Falcon, the DeLorean, the Batmobile. It's iconic. So I get why they wanted to show it. But damn it, there's a part in the movie where they first show it when it's in the <clears throat> the, the Bay Area. The thing where they're building it still at the station, the space station. I there And freaking Kirk and Scotty are literally in a little... They're flying around it so slow, and it, it literally is like a six minutes of them flying around the ship, it seems like. And, like, I love the Enterprise, trust me, but this movie is chocked full of Enterprise porn. <laughs> it's the movie, I swear, most people say, oh, the Star Trek movie where you literally just get a bunch of um, shots of the Enterprise ship flying around and floating. It, it's true. It's a lot of the movie. And that's why I said it seems like they took an, a story for an episode and turned it into a live action movie. <laughs> um, but 
But it's cool to see all the cast back in a live action movie. Um, I don't like the uniforms. Wow. The uniforms that they picked from what the TV show had to the stale, nasty gray and light brown and yellow and grayish blue uniforms that they had. They were ugly. Ugly. I don't know what in the hell they were thinking when they came up with those uniforms. Good lord thank god in the second movie they decided to go with another uniform that actually looked great looked awesome so but yeah i mean the the movie's not it's not a horrible movie um i'm honestly if you're not a star trek fan if you're not into star trek you probably won't enjoy watching the movie i'm not gonna lie to you because it is pretty it's a slow burner there's not a lot to the story um, it's, if you love watching the Enterprise fly around in space, you'll probably enjoy it. <laughs> but, yeah, if you're not a big Star Trek fan, this movie's probably not entertaining enough for you. The second one fixes that, though. The second movie fixes that. So, as the first movie to start this franchise off, um, I think, I'm honestly, I'm gonna give it a, it's a 6 out of 10. It's just, it's, it's boring. It's boring. And like I said, if you're not a Star Trek fan you're probably really going to be bored in it. So a 6 out of 10 for Star Trek, the motion picture, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed that review. Thanks for watching, and I'll be catching you on the tube laters because I have spoken.